Good night, Guyana. I sat here in this chair and I listened to my own self with that little video that I would have made that the gentleman played a minute ago. And a sentence is missing from that video that I need to correct and you need to know. We still do not have insurance coverage out there. Exxon Mobil and Sinoc and Hess head office, the bosses of those, those three oil companies have still not yet signed giving us insurance. That is still, the insurance we have is still signed by the subsidiaries. They, they are the, the local partners who owns nothing. So in case of a, of a spill, Ghana is not protected. I just think to tell you to, to clear the air on that so you don't be misguided and thinking that Guyana is well protected with insurance. No, we are still not covered. Two years have already passed and ExxonMobil and Sinoc and Hess has not signed that document. Just to clear the air. And let me say good night again. Tonight I want to talk, talk about our leaders, what's happening in Parliament. We carried a story on Sunday, and having read that story, it pierced my soul. And I just want to tell you guys how I feel about it, so you can understand what went on. You know, some of us go through life, and some of us grow through life. It's two choices. Two choices that you have to make. Whether you want to go through life or grow through life. For me, my choice is and was, and it will still be, I want to grow through life. Guys, what went on in Parliament Monday was not a budget discourse or debate. It was not a roadside, waterfront, or a rum shop gaff. No, it wasn't. It was shameful and distasteful and totally disrespectful to this country. I have grown up and learned that none of us is perfect on earth. We were all born with imperfection. My creator, the holy books that I read, has taught me that. I don't know the reason, so please don't ask me that one. But I know we are all imperfect. But as time goes by in life, we have to learn and make changes as we grow through life. I said, go through life and not go through life. Please don't mix me up with those two words. When... When one can live one way, year after year, and do the same thing over and over, it means we would have learned nothing. And that is sad. It is sad because we all learn every day. Especially smart and intelligent people. Like our leaders, the people who every citizen of this land should look up to. I have said it many times, many, many times. I find it difficult, very difficult to respect many of the leaders of this land. I have discovered so much about them over the past 26 years, having been in this newspaper business, that it stifles my conscience to excuse what they have done and continue to do to us in this beautiful country of ours. Yes. Yes. When I see some of the things them, them do, I can only sense evil. 
just evil, pure evil. And that is the truth, the utter truth, which springs from way in my soul, not from my heart or my belly bottom, but from my soul. The spirit within me, brothers and sisters, instructs me to stay far from some of them. Many of them are unhealthy for me, my family, and this country. The things that they have done to you, listen to me carefully, brothers and sisters, the things that they have done to you, if only you could understand it the way I do, you would feel the same way I feel. They are the most selfish people you can find. They are only looking out for themselves and that of their family and friends. Let me be very frank with you, guys. They do not care about you nor me. Their only concern is for themselves. I use two words to describe them. Evil and nasty. What transpired in the National Assembly on Monday is proof of the nature of the leaders we have in this land. Them show their true colors during the debate on the national budget for 2021. Instead of them debating about the proposed government expenditure or discussing the state of our oil, our sugar, our rice, our gold, our bauxite, or the sellout of our country's wealth, they cuss out each other, double in vulgarities and hurl nasty insults at each other. This display of crassness shocked my young reporters. They could not believe what they were witnessing, what they were hearing. It so affected those young journalists that the first things which they said upon arrival back at the office was that they could not believe what they heard from the mouths of their leaders. One of them said to me, Boss, are these the people leading this country? I could only look at, look at the reporter and smile when I heard that. It was almost as if they came unprepared for the debate, but ready to abuse out and cuss down each other. Man, Guyanese, we can do better than that. We have to do better than that. All the 65 member parliaments, they had one week to study the budget estimates. And they were supposed to return to the National Assembly Monday, equipped with their criticisms, observations, and analysis regarding the budget. They were supposed to uphold the high standards of decency, etiquette, and mutual respect that is expected of them for each other. However, it turned out to be the opposite. They hurled racist, homophobic, and sexist insults at one another. You hear me, guys? My reporter said it started with the Minister of Labor, Joseph Hamilton, who, in his 35 minutes presentation, had a functioning microphone 
but prefer to shout his presentation across the room. This led to a shouting match with the opposition shouting back. One MP said to him, you get in horse, father sit down. Another one, Sherwood Duncan, one of the coalition's MP, he began to pelt insults at the minister. And instead, the minister, ignoring his colleague, shouted back. And then you will hear the cursing from the lady that jumps out of a man's body regularly. Yeah. The minister was referring to Shorewood as a lady that jumps out of a man's body. Isn't that unbelievable? Guys, you hear what's going on in Parliament? This is how they, they addressed each other. The third, the third in line up to speak was MP Geeta Chandan Edmund. At the beginning of her speech, she wished belated birthday greetings to the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Mr. Anil Nandalal. But she did not stop there. She took a personal and nasty swipe at the childless AG by saying, I am, I am a proud mother of two children and all the credit goes to my husband. You hear that, guys? You hear, you, you hear what I said there just now? I am still shocked hearing those words coming from a former magistrate in this country to a colleague. I am horrified that such a hurtful and insulting statement should have been made or could be made from one human being to another. Wow. Come on, Geats. You can and you must do better. Better than that, girl. For me, it's the lowest of low one can get with a fellow human being. Just a note of advice. Just a note of advice. The beauty of life does not only depends on how happy and proud you are, but how happy and proud others can be because of you. I believe you can do better. And I also believe you owe the AG, Attorney General Anil Nandalal. We are not relatives. We are no, no connection whatsoever. So don't think he's my family. You owe that man the most sincere apology. Wow. Please do that. Homophobic insults hurled from one MP to another. That, what, that is what was going on there Monday, brothers and sisters, in the National Assembly. In the first case, it was the opposition leader, Joseph Harmon, who shouted to Minister Kwame McCoy and said, I have a little boy for you. This is the same opposition leader who can't find words to tell Guyana what his government did about the Kanji and Kaichur oil blocks, but can find little boy, a little boy for a minister. This is the same Joseph Harmon who can't find time to hold a press conference to inform the nation about the role his government played 
in giving away of this country's wealth. But he can shout at a minister and tell that person how he can find a little buy for him. This is Guyana. This is beautiful Guyana. These are your leaders, guys. Joining the bandwagon afterwards was MP Katius, who had her ear, earphones plugged in for most of the most of the beginning of the debates. She shouted to Minister Kwame, Rainbow, Rainbow, Rainbow. You don't know what is Rainbow, Rainbow. This is a known way to refer to the LBGT community. The gay and lesbian community. Yes. These are your leaders. The Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports, Charles Ramson Jr. Also join in by insulting the opposition members, by calling them political dons. This same gentleman, this same Ramson Jr., studied oil and gas in England, come back here and can't open his mouth as to the wrongs that is needed to be corrected in the oil sector. Like the Starbrook block deal that leaves our people collecting the crumbs from these oil companies. But he can address his parliamentarians colleague as Duns. This is a beautiful Guyana. Eh? I love this country, guys. I love this country. Then you get the Minister of Local Government, Nigel Darmlal, telling Member Parliament Ganesh Maipal that all he owns is his Bamzi after Maipal made accusations against Dharam Lal's ex-wife. This is the kind of behavior and attitude that goes on in the highest office of this land. That's the slurs. That's the words. That's how they describe, that's how they speak to each other. And our children and our grandchildren have to emulate and be being molded by them, our leaders. You know, it didn't stop there. During the proceedings, somebody said, the Minister of Parliamentary Affairs and Governance, Gail Teixeira, had recently lost her father. And when the minister, Gail Teixeira, was about to make an interjection, here was one of the opposition shout and tell she, why you don't sit down and moan your father? Jeez. Wow. Sometimes, sometimes I just can't find words to describe these people. We have making decisions for our lives and our livelihoods. A colleague who has lost her father, instead of offering consoling words, this MP makes the most insensitive comment one can make. One can make to someone in mourning. Wow, Guyana. Wow. I can only imagine what these foreigners and all these embassies people thinking about us. 
No wonder. No wonder we are being looked at and treated like nobody in our own land. Mm -hmm. We are treated like nobody. We are treated like second class citizens of this land. Later in the afternoon, the same Monday afternoon, in the same National Assembly, as they continued their presentation, it was Government Minister Dr. Vishwa Mahadeo was his turn to make his input towards the budget. He told the National Assembly that in 2017, the Rehabilitation Department under the former administration requested an apparatus named Medical Chest Vibrator. This, Mahadeo said, would assist those patients who were experiencing lung and post-stroke complications. But the minister brought this, Mr. Speaker. He said, as he displayed to the National Assembly, a vibrating dildo, a sex toy. You hear me? A vibrating dildo a sex toy. Hmm. It is not clear how and where the coalition government sourced this device since the laws of Guyana prohibit the importation of sex toys. But let me say this, brothers and sisters. If them did buy it, it had to be by mistake. A mistake by someone. I guess they would have ordered chest vibrator and the people send vibrating dildo. What's the big deal? What's this huge fuss over a few dildo? May I ask you guys? You have to raise it up like that in parliament and wave it in this fashion? So the whole world, including our children, can see that dirty, despicable thing? What message, what message are you people sending to our children, MPs? What lawlessness are you guys going on with in that parliament? May I ask? Is this how to mold mold our young generation? I guess not. I guess not, guys. Come on, you can do much, much better. You guys can do a lot more. It's a shame to display a sex toy in that way. You know, not even a, f a fish market or rum shop people would expose and carry on with such a lewd conduct. I don't think it will be tolerated or accepted there in a fish shop or a rum shop, much less in the parliament. It was nasty. God, man. What the goodly doctor, Mr. Mahadeo, should have been talking about and waving is the bills for the drugs they're buying and procurement methods they're using to give out all those billions in drug contracts. He should have been waiving the invoices for the rents, them paying on warehouses to store the drugs. He should have been waiving those inflated invoices on drugs we get in. 
He should have been showing us the prices we are paying for some of these, these um, pills and medication. Not a dildo. Not a dildo, guys. And where was the speaker of the house? Where was the speaker of the house, Mr. Manzuna, dear? The speaker was right there in the convention center, overheard the verbal and vulgar mudslinging. What he did, he failed to take control over the MPs immoral and lawless behavior. This is the type of leaders we have running this land. As I grind down to the end, let me ask, is this the standard you want from your leaders? Is this how we want our children and grandchildren to behave if and when they assume political leadership? Is this the example? Them setting and showing this nation? Is that a good one? Is this the mentality which they are cultivating in future generations? Guys, I consider what took place there Monday in the House of Parliament. Sick and disgraceful that our leaders could descend to such a level. It is insulting to all decent men and women who would have turned on the radio and social media to be exposed to such obscene comments. It offends our sense of decency. Guys, yes, I am one of them that is very offended. And we have to do something. We have to say something to them. I was just told that the speaker addressed the matter because we carried that story in the Sunday newspaper. And that was the lead story. And he told the reporters that the people can sue us for reporting on these lewd and immoral actions of the member parliament. Well, I want to tell them all, if they bring a lawsuit, I will handle it. Because immorality, and where my children and grandchildren concern my family, they can't handle that. And I will not sit back and stay quiet, allowing them to mislead and put dirty things in their minds. Good night. Good yes. night. First of all, um, I would like to thank everyone for the information, and it is really opening my eyes. But something that struck me with what you said, Mr. Lal, mm -hmm. that with these politicians, if reporters see that they are misbehaving, they need to shut them out and don't talk. If they talk, they will be penalized. Is that, 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 that is, when I mean penalized, the, the speaker said that they could sue them then. So they are exempt, their behavior are exempt. They could do what they want and nobody mustn't say anything. Basically, basically, basically what they're saying to us 
is that how they how they run the parliament and what they say to each other it must um, we, we mustn't know they are our leaders and we mustn't know who we have as leaders how they think how they behave and nothing you mustn't know know anything about them but they must put on the nice suit and tie and their and their their dress and walk the road and when they meet you they they present that beautiful um, outlook but when you listen to them and their behavior, it speaks a different part of a different person. Oh. That's who, that's, that's who they are. In their own little den, that's how they carry on. And then outside here, outside here, in front me and you face, they're, they, they behave like if they can't kill a fly. Or they don't know what any coarse word uh, is, is, is about. They well, pretend, man. Okay, They're well, all pretenders. Me, yeah, I, I get what you said. To me, that, the, that scenario in Parliament is real obnoxious. And yes. It's real obnoxious. And uh, I, I think they all need to make an apology to the entire Guyanese people, the whole of Guyana. I agree That's with you. They should. That's my contribution. Thank you. They should. Thank you. Yeah. They should. When I heard what the speaker said, I was actually very surprised because this is a group of MPs that are caught red-handed misbehaving, behaving in a, in a very undignified manner. Right. And your first response, well, I don't know if they had discussions with the speaker of the house, but I, I was surprised that his first response is, you're not supposed to cover this mm -hmm. instead of to mm -hmm. apologize for the way it was handled. Mm -hmm. And so the Speaker of the House, I think he said that um, more attention is going to be paid today to the kind of behavior like that. Oh, uh, well, then if if an MP pull on the pants mm -hmm. or, 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 or pull up the skirt, it's OK. okay. Another caller on the line. Good night, caller. Call you're on to Kaicho Radio. Thank you, all. You know, anything they do, the people must know. Mm -hmm. You understand? All right. I suppose we lost that caller. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that one of the first things they always think when um, we report on things like this is whether they can sue you. Yes. Another, another caller? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Caller, you're on to Kaito Radio. Yes. Um, I would like to make a comment about this thing in Parliament. I don't get a little thing. What are you talking about? Move away from the radio. I think some of can get a free Christmas gift. I'm sorry? Could you move away from your radio if you're situated close to your radio, sir? All right, say again. Yeah, yeah, that is what I You got a free test, but this. You're not hearing the person, man. Just. Uh, okay, we have to cut that call because we have bad reception. If you got bad reception, no waste time. Just cut it, cut it and let's get going. You know, yeah. if, give people a chance if they wanted to make a comment on it. Okay, and what I was saying is that them always running to this i will sue you is yes. really indicative of a mindset that mm -hmm. would rather muzzle the press mm -hmm. than to let the people of the country find out exactly what's going on with them and behind closed doors mm -hmm. and that's very distasteful in my opinion mm. they never like they never like a bad press you know they they don't want they don't want the nation to know exactly who they are mm -hmm. You know, it's a but to but people, it's right? more than a correct. It's more than a it's disrespect. A disdain, right? It's disdain. It's, mm -hmm. dis it's, more, it's more than disrespect. Mm -hmm. It's disdain for the Guyanese people. Yeah, and it's 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 tough on us. You know, it's tough on me. It's tough on, on every one of us here, because we have been in this in the news business for twenty six years, and we just can't help it. You know, that so we have to report it. These are things. These are things I believe in my heart that we should not throw under the carpet. It must come out. People need to know who you are because you need to better yourselves. 
we expect better from them as leaders, man. Mm -hmm. But look, this thing, this thing go out on, on on the internet, it goes out to the world. Exactly. And they know that then, is this what you want to show of Guyana? Exactly. This is what you want to show to the world, exactly. man? Exactly. I mean, right. your children... I didn't, I didn't even want to... to I, I'm not happy um, speaking those, those things on, on, on air, but this is the only way for you to get them to change. Caller on the line. Hi, good, good night, night caller. You're on to Kaicho Radio. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll listen to the program. You can put me through. Yes. You have to make a comment, sir? Yeah, I love to make a comment. I listen to the program in the car. Oh. Right? Uh, well, I listen to the program all the time. Mo? Hello? Yes, yes we'll be hearing you. Yeah. My name is James. Anyhow, let me say this first and foremost. I think both sides of the politician has no respect for the people of this country. Right? They have no respect at all. Even if they're saying that you want them to apologize, they don't make sense. Because this is who they are by nature. You see what they're doing to us with our resources? Yes. Yeah? Yes. You see what they're doing to us with our resources? Yes. But they we don't care what they do with no regard. But right? They forget that it's the people that who put them in that position that we, in which that way they are today. But my right? friend, my mm. friend, uh -huh. Uh -huh. my friend, we cannot sit back idle. We cannot be silent. No, everything, I'm not saying to be silent. Everything, mm -hmm. everything belongs to all of us, not them. Exactly. So exactly. we have to, we have to continue to speak out. We have to mm -hmm. speak up. We have to wake them up. You understand? So we just can't take that position and say, man. Yeah, but my, my point is right. Look yeah. at this. Here. Look at this tasteful this thing is. You know, it was, if it was a civilian, how that they'll do, and the police then be catch it. We were in big problem. Yes. As a civilian. Yeah. Yes. Yeah? You can't even. As, a matter of fact, he, you, he, a matter of fact support, mm. if you get caught with a dildo mm. in your hand walking on the street, the mm. police will arrest you and mm. put you and put you before the magistrate. Mm. And you can, you, 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 you can be jailed. Right? You, mm -hmm. But where you is mean, the police now in parliament? That is what I'm saying. They should have charged the minister that bring it to court, bring it in the parliament. They I agree with that. Him. A charge is needed to be filed against that minister. I agree. Or someone, or someone should file a, file a lawsuit against a, a lawsuit. him. Exactly. Right? Because now look at this, sir. Let me say they are supposed to be the big brother of this nation. That's right. Right? And this, if this is the example that they're setting, suppose that we now decide, okay, if you could get the law, we could get the law then and walk with it from the place. Because you are not leading by example. I hear you, brother. I hear you. Yeah, I'm not leading. And it's not just that low, you know. It's so much issues, buddy. Mm -hmm. In this country, it's like when you, when, when you meet certain positions as such, you become more powerful than the law. When all of us are supposed to be answerable to the law. Yeah, you I know agree. Me? We got double standard in this country all the time. And it's, the, the thing that has irks me the most, here, sir, right, is look at this, here, sir. Now, if Glenn Lal do something, everybody jump down there. When a minister do it, it's a difference. Okay, he get a pass. Yes. How he become, how he get a pass? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. the law supposed to be for you and for me, when did he become more righteous than me and you? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you, I want to tell you and I want to tell all Guyana, we allow these people to get away with it. We, we carry ourselves. We make them feel that they are the leaders. They are not the leaders. They are our servants. They exactly. were elected to exactly. serve. In fact, in fact, they are our But the nation... We their salary. Yeah, the we nation, the ones paying their salary. Yes, you know, my I friend. I really don't understand what going on. But unless... Let me tell you. Let me, let me be frank and say something, right? Mm. Unless the people of this country don't catch ourselves, we forever going to end this mess. Sometimes I don't even blame... The ministers of them, I blame the people of the country. I guess, right? We allow them to get with a lot of ignorance, right. a lot of vulgarity. It's the leaders you know I mean? we have to blame. Don't blame the people, no, no, my the friend. Re the reason why I'm saying that, because look, at the end of the day, when we don't, when we don't elect them to, to office, they don't, they're in office, right? Yeah. We, don't like who, we don't like what they're doing. We got to come out and speak out against it, stand up against it as a people. Look how they give away the nation wealth. Yes. Look how they give away the nation wealth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As far as the gay and the design for foreigners, not Guyanese. Everything, I agree, fully agree I with listen, you. I listen, I listen to just now when you put on the tape right about what happened to India. You know what it takes me back to? Yeah. They did it to the blacks, to the Indians, the whites. I mean, we want to go down the racial road, right? Let yes. me make that clear. 
But the truth is the truth, and the fact is the fact. And we're just clear. It's the same thing they do until we exactly, exactly. It's the same thing. But we have to, we have to bind together, my friend. Yeah, but how, 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 how? Look, let me tell you. It's, it's easier said than done because guess why? A lot of people in this country they still playing party politics, right? Yeah, yeah but slowly, I'm, slowly, mm -hmm. slowly. Dire, dire, my friend. Slowly, slowly, we will get there, man. Yeah, but, but, but we got to start somewhere. Yeah, that's so true. I understand. You know, right? I, I'm, a, I'm a liar listening to this program. In you, fact, let me go as far as say this. If it wasn't for you, I would not know a lot of things that are going on in this country. I hear you. And thank God for people like you that mm -hmm. kindly fight and kindly mantle. Every night I just pray for you. Thank you. you. Telling you? Thank God for you kindly fight and mantle because somebody got to stand up. Thank you. Somebody got to be a coffee. Somebody got to be a Mahatma Gandhi. Well, Somebody got to be a Martin Luther King. Well, I am not, and we here yeah. are not. But, no, we, but we, were, we were blessed. Mm. We were blessed with these tools and mm. with, the, with the little knowledge that, that, that we're gathering every day. And we are bringing them slowly to you and guys. I because and I think, let me tell you, I think the nation appreciate that. Thank I you. I think they appreciate it because it's only cultural. It looks like cultural alone that that mouth. Nobody is saying I know mouth. Mm -hmm. All the news media when the cover story is frivolous stories. Mm -hmm. We got some serious, serious issues in this country that need ironing out. I, 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 look, look at look at this thing. It's I was talking to a friend the other day. Now the police are claiming that ten take care, right? Just listen to it, so it's illegal, right? Mm -hmm. I, I am not to come out of the topic, right? Mm -hmm. But yet still. Yet still, when they catch you with tent on the car, you could go and take it off. Why not ban tent from coming in the country in general? Say you won't got a problem. Ah, uh, all eh? right, all right, all right. No, no, no. Some, some vehicles have to get tint. Is okay, well, you see, well, then you can't ban the tint. <laughs> you can't ban the tint. No, no, but I was just using that as a general as something, right? But yeah. my point is, we got to stay. Don't catch yourself. Let me, let me stay, let me stay, mm -hmm. stay on point. Stay on point. Okay, Let's don't well, deviate, let bro. Okay, but the, let's put it the, this way, the wealth, right, let, the uh, wealth we have, uh, you hear me? Uh, the wealth we have in Guyana is more than enough to feed this whole region. This whole region, not Guyana alone, you know. I, I'm, I'm doing a program for Friday in which I'll tell you guys how the wealth we have here can feed the whole region. Make all of us live a very comfortable life. But guess what? We have so much, and if you read today, we carry the story in which the vice president said, we have to take loans, loans to buy food in this country, bro. All right, well, let me ask you a stupid question, and you could maybe um, shine yes. some light on this way. Go ahead. If Exxon was paying the tax, would we, be able, would, would we still want to buy a loan if we get any tax from Exxon? Oh, boy, just the tax alone... Had we collect, uh, if we only collect tax alone from Exxon, we, we, we could be able to feed Trinidad plus Guyana. So then you see what happened then? Yes, so then man. Day, you see what happened then? Yeah, you got you to you take your time. Board. You got to take your time and listen. You can ask these questions so we mm. can bring it out, you know, very right, clear. Right. Mm. If we get taxes alone, forget about the royalty and the profit. If we get taxes alone on the amount of oil we have going out there, but eh, we we feed we, we feed Suriname too, and we all can have a beautiful life. Wow! You this see, so, so you sad. see, you see what Suriname so got right? Six and a quarter yep. percent royalty. Yep. We get less than two. Suriname yep. get thirty plus thirty percent plus taxes. What we get? Nothing. Zero. And guess what? You find a job tomorrow and don't pay taxes. And don't pay taxes. No, you got to pay tax. That's right. That's right. <laughs> every security guard, every teacher, every police, every nurse, but every you know weeder and sweeper of this land have to pay their taxes. But okay. Exxon them don't pay. You want to hear much? Mm. The Guyanese people who work with the oil company, they don't have pay to pay tax. their taxes. Yeah, but the foreign workers who are working with the oil company, it don't, it's exempt from tax. They don't have to pay tax. Well, you then, see the then I pass? Mm, yeah, but then it therefore, it. then it therefore we will, we will say this then they are set up for foreigners then. Not for Guyanese. Exactly. No. It's not for Guyanese. I put it further than that. I put it further than that. We are taking loans to help them to fetch out our assets. Yes. 
our gold, our diamond, our bauxite, our oil, our everything. You hear? Listen to me carefully. And nobody can dispute this, what I'm saying. We are taking loans. And part of that money, what we're taking for, to, to give us a better life, we are actually giving them to the foreigners to, to carry away, to fetch out, to thief our wealth. So now, does that make any sense at all? Oh, that's does why I am here to tell you, brother, you, could, you have to spread the word. You got to get more people to understand what's going on here. Don't keep it to yourself. You understand? Look, tomorrow... It's just, it's just shameful as that. Tomorrow... And everything and appalling what's going on in this country. But yes, yes, yes. Yeah? It's terrible. It's terrible, it's man. It's so sad. You got mother... I showed you got mother tonight looking at the children and studying where the next meal coming from. Thank you. I and know that. Got, and the country got so much wealth to offer the people, the citizens of this land. Yeah, I tell you? Yeah. But it's not reaching to the, to the people that we needed yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it irks me. Every day of my life. This is so, so sad, buddy. So let, let me go so far to tell you, right? Every day we have editorial meeting in this, in this place. And I lose staff from here. They tell me plain, boss, I can't handle this thing. I can't handle this thing. This thing will send me crazy. And they, and they, they quit. And we are such a good friends that they send, they send stories. And they're home. And they're still sick. Imagine if they're with us here every day. You know, if you come in and be part of our editorial meeting, the way we discuss these stories and put these headlines, it's sick your soul, buddy. I tell you, it's so, 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 so sad, buddy. So sad. Look, Imagine Kimal is here. Country. Kimal, one second. Tell them how you feel so you, you come here. Especially when I'm covering the oil and gas beat. And I see not just that we're being stolen from, but the magnitude of the theft. Mm. Sometimes I, I cannot handle it when mm. I'm in a meeting. Yeah, man. It takes a toll, a mental toll. Yes. Emotional Definitely. stress. Definitely. Yeah. No, because you see, Kim, one of the things, because in your heart, you, you know me, you know, guy, and I suppose the Guyanese people are supposed to get a different level than where they are right now. It's not that we don't got the resources, but what we lack in, in this country is good leadership. Yeah, That's the bottom line. The you know, <laughs> let me tell you this. We behave bad. We behave terrible here when the day come. That you don't want to know the amount of, of um, bad feelings and, and language we use to describe these leaders. <laughs> Man, you, it's, it's, it's unthinkable sometimes. But, but we, we have to use it because we got to get that, that, that what? Satisfaction? Mm. Yeah, we well, use it. Actually, and I we call the mean, names when we do it. I hear you made mention just now, right? That, that the, um, the people in Parliament get back because the journalists and them the story, right? Mm. And threaten it for soon. How, where do you know what wrong? So speaking the truth? For speaking the truth? Yes. Hmm? Yeah. For speaking the truth? Yeah. You show me for speaking the truth? Yep, the truth. So then nobody, nobody not supposed to say not not question these ministers when they do these things. No. They're supposed to sit back, by the lip and allow them to do what they do. They're told they to do a job for the people. Mm -hmm. The they thief out. They're to us, not it, we answerable to them. You hear nobody? They thief out your prime land. You hear me? They give, they transfer it to their friends and their family. And guess what? You and I don't know. Unless somebody whispers something to the Kaicho News, we don't know. You know, you know, Ogle. Ogle will become the next city of Guyana. So George, Georgetown, Georgetown will, will, will not be it. Ogle will be it. And all the land around Ogle, they have already snatched up for themselves. The political players snatched it up. You hear me? I understand that, but you see, it comes back to what I say again. Mm -hmm. Unless we don't rise up as a people, as, as a people, as the six races, we got to hold one vice or speak with one vice. These are just still continue happening to us. Well, yes. That's how right. we get change. That's how change came about from exactly. all we over. We got to come together collectively. Enough is enough. We yes. set up. We got to come we together we and we got to stand up. We got to yeah, come together and tell. This misleadership, buddy. Right, we gotta tell Exxon. 
We got to tell Sinoc. We got to tell S. We got to tell all these, all these oil companies and all these, all these gold mining companies that is sitting in, in our land, raking away our gold, our diamond, our bauxite. We got to go to them and say, no, not anymore. Let on, me it. Until Let me we can get a fair share. We got to stand up and shoot it to our and shoot it to our leaders and tell them, guys, girls, no, not not anymore. You have to come on board with us. That's all we're asking for. A better okay. deal. Our exactly. fair Let share. Let me ask this another question. Yeah. Um, they released the contract that they signed with the company that was here. They can't remember the company. They can't remember all the gold will come back now again. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah, no, they we haven't contract. seen that contract. That contract for me, in my uh, heart, I believe, is even worse than, than, than the oil exactly. company contract. How, how do you still a making deal for our behalf? We don't know. We got to hear through the great vine. Oh, buddy. And when we hear, look at this, sir. Let me, let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. You know, right? If, if, when, when, they, when they was to make this oil deal, whether the first sign is the 1% or the 2%, did they put it towards, did they just come and put it towards the people? You know they want to get a better deal than that? Oh, of course. Of yeah. course. Because of they course. want to get better advice, even from the people that don't have no, not a clue about oil, we want to know 2% they make sense. You that can't come me out and pick my mangoes. I got picking my mangoes every day, pick 100 and give me two. That's you right. Know that makes sense. That's right. That's right. You would have known that they make sense. That's you right. Tell them, no, we don't want that. Get out. Get out. You need so, to get you out. Know what's sad? You know what's sad? We just got to wait till they don't do the stubbornness, and then we just got to hear about it. And sometimes when they don't do it, it's so late that we really can't do nothing much. Well, that is, that, is how they, that is how they all been running this, this nation for the last 30 years, my friend. And you running it, you and running it so like you're running your own personal business. This is the country you're running. This is not a shop. Right, correct. This correct. is the country affairs you're running. This is not a shop. This is why, this is why, this is why I said this thing over and over. You got to thank David Granger for releasing this, this oil contract. Hadn't he released this oil contract, we... 50, 60 years from now, we would have become pauper. We would have become beggars without knowing what Guyana is getting. That's the only thing the man did good. That, that I will go to that, I will go with that to my grave. Hmm. That he did a, a fantastic job by releasing that contract. The oil contracts. Yeah, look, at least, at least it shines some light so, so we could get some more of faith of what's going on in, in, in that's the contract. That's right. Look, oh my, oh my, come, oh my, come with a contract now. Mm -hmm. And we and can't see it. it. They're not releasing it. They're not releasing it. Can you that's imagine that? You get put there to do a job for the people. You sign a contract and we can't know who you sign that's in. That's right. Eh? So you then you could sign it tomorrow. You and don't. Guy needs, we can put all the guys out again. Mm -hmm. And by the time we catch yourself, we down about guys somewhere else. That's right. That's right. It's just other leaders we really are saying. And that's why I say to my people that listen to the so and listen to the Glen Lance show. We got to catch ourselves. We got to catch ourselves. These politicians are answerable to us. We're yeah. not answerable to them. We that... pay them a salary. It's like this as I, as I put it. If you got a contract to build your house, and you come back and you make him, him work in the car or you want him to work, and he keeps him material, he keeps him money, he keeps him everything, you're going to fire him. That you chase him. You're going to fire him, you get rid of him. That's right. If you say, oh, you got three the politicians on them. That's how simple. Thank you. That's how simple this thing is, brother. That's it. Point blank. Forget about party and alignment and all kinds. If they're not doing the job that we put them there to do for the people, they got to remove them. I keep saying. Get rid of them. I keep saying this thing is not a PPP or a PNC thing, brother. This thing is not, not about Africans or Indians. No. This thing is about Guyanese. Guyanese. All six races. That's right. All six. And I say this all the time, mate. Right? I don't care when when I say they say so. I don't care who run this country so long as they get Guyanese people a good living. They got my support. That's right. Because I'm for Guyana. And That's I'm for right. Guyanese force. Listen, listen to me before you go. We have to rally behind the leaders and we got to demand from them. We got to say, listen, guys, I got to stop this choppiness. And once we rally behind them, we have to force them to bring about a change. And they will. Like I said, it's happening all over the world, bro. Yeah, but, but let, me ask, let me ask this honest question. You think 
Let me be honest right now, right? You mm. think any one of them, whether the opposition or the ruling party, look like they want to mess up to now. I hear all the pressure the country will bring in about the exile and the raw deal and everything. Up to now, me and none of the two sides come out to say nothing addressing this exile and with these deals. None they, of the two sides. They will have to, trust me. If we, if we speak up and we speak up loudly, they will have to change. They cannot sit down idle. Is we not saying anything, so whatever Sutton them collecting is good. And leave you like that. You're dummies, you're fools. You continue eating your roti and your, your, your cassava and your, your cassava bread and you stay right there. But we have, to, we have to agitate it, man. We have to wake them up. This right? so, so sad, eh? Thanks. Let me, let me ask, wait, before I go, mm -hmm. let me ask Kimar not to get your personal business, right? I show Kimar I would like to get a piece of land in Guyana. Of course. Right? Of course. Everybody right, does. Kimar? Like, Everybody. I show you like to get a piece of your, your board land, your board. Let me put it so. Can you buy me? Right? A matter of fact, a matter of fact, I want to get involved with a project so I can make some money in the oil in the oil sector. Because it's my country, it's my oil. You should get involved with it. I'm gonna do a special program to tell you guys how you how you have to prepare. So you can get a bite. It's our mango. All of us should be part of it. Yeah, yeah. All of us should get to taste it and eat it. Yeah, I want to know any question. Want to know. If Kimal is right to jump up to me and say, hey, you know what? I got some money I want to invest. If they would give him a sort of amount of land, like this gift to these people that come and claim that the coffee invest in that land for years, sit down on the land. And when they're ready to sell back pieces to different people, would well, they get Kimal it as a guy needs? Well, they did that. They did that, my friend. With 700 acre over wheels. They give, they give the foreigners 700 acre and um, they said they're going to use the, the acreage for, to plant fruits. Hmm. And they will buy the fruits and put on the, fr the fruits and vegetable plant to supply the, 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 the oil rigs out there. And guess what? Not even a year after they sell back, they don't sell out a couple of hundred acre. Well, and they collect the money. There. They collect the money and walk away with it without you paying a cent though. tax. And nobody looking into them things. Nobody looking into these things. Nobody saying anything, bro. Everybody turn a blind eye. Well, we reported on it. We reported on it. I spoke about it on the radio before. So they're they're coming here. Your leaders giving them these land for free. And they take it, take it now, selling it, collecting millions, walk away with the millions. And we 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 left we left holding our head, the few here on our heads, with nothing. How much, how much more injustice can be done to Guyanese people? By, how much well, more this injustice? I keep asking that day and how night. How much in, more? I keep how asking that question day and night in my mind. Eh? No, I got no love for this country. The people of this country, buddy, it's all about themselves. Yeah. These um these politicians of them, mm. man, you Kima could have been the president. When you could have been the president, everybody in the room, you could have been ministers making decisions. Yeah, I tell you, and they could, the, 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 the ministers that we have could have been on the outside. Mm -hmm. They were like, we doing this to them. So I do it to us. That's a, that's a good question, my friend. I could feel, I could feel you. I could well, feel you. I get on. Let me tell you. I get on I, like that every day. It hurt me so much, buddy, to know that we then, our country so blessed. So blessed. And yet still we got people later. So, they need to shop sometime and buy one tennis roll. And uh, they can't afford to buy a bag, so they can buy one. Mm -hmm. yeah? I hear you. I know that. I know that. Well, 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 tell me that the case about Guyanese people. Mm -hmm. in, where, in what way? I went out, I went out with, with, during the COVID, during the lockdown. And I took out some hampers and I shared it. And I saw the way people live. It breaks your, your heart. To see how they live right across this country poverty is all over the whole yeah, world the yeah, whole I'm world sad. is talking very, about very us sad. yeah i tell you but i pray i pray to god we get this thing fixed and get it fixed more sooner than later we'll get it fixed trust yeah, me we'll get it fixed as, as you rightfully put exile looking for the hip i hit hard we will get it fixed and we will get Remember it now, fixed we got a timeline we have we to get it timeline. fixed 
Some countries take 40, 50, 60, 70 years. We don't have that time. Well, we will get it saying, fixed. So we got a timeline. We got to get it fixed. And we will get it fixed. To you, your staff, continue the good work. Thank you, bro. I'm going to come on the phone and continue listening to the radio. Keep up the good work to you, Thank your you. staff. Thank you. Okay, Thank enjoy you. your life.